spice, right? It's pepperoni, and I forgot pepperoni. to Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. So we have another wonderful cooking demo today with one of my very favorite chefs. She is not only one of the most prolific of the plant-based chefs in terms of just being a machine for cranking out recipes. What I love about Kathy Hester is she is inclusive. Doesn't matter what your dietary style is. You can't have soy, no problem. Can't have gluten, no problem. SOS free, it's never a problem for her. So many chefs are just, you know, believe it or not, when, the, when I first started the show in March, I had asked a few chefs that I knew to be on the show, like, how dare you ask me to do no oil? But Kathy doesn't think like that. She wants everybody to enjoy her food. And I don't think there's a challenge out there that she cannot come up with. When I asked her for a ranch dressing without nuts or beans, she made a delicious one that's in my last book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. And she has a recipe in this book. So y'all know probably that I love the spices at Local Spicery. And my favorite one is probably the pepperoni blend, which is salt free. I love it. A lot of people don't want to buy online or what for whatever reason. Well, Kathy Hester has come up with an SOS free version of Pepperoni spice recipes in this book. If you buy it by midnight of October 18th, you'll email the receipt to Chef AJ Bonus at yahoo.com. We'll send you a bunch of bonuses, extra recipes, videos, and the audio copy. Please welcome back to the show, Kathy Hester. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Hey, I don't know if you got that, but I was showing you the pepperoni spice. I wish you guys could smell it because it smells like deliciousness. <laughs> I have been saying since I met you that you need to come up with your own because you make every, you make a barbecue potato chip spice. You can uh, you have a great salt free seasoning blend. You you are a spice wizard. Well, thank you, and I love anything wizard, as you know. And look, I got a new shirt just for your show. <laughs> I know you are, you're one of the biggest Harry Potter fans in the world. Oh, possibly. Um, yeah, I just love it. I just love having fun and. I tend to get a little too serious, believe it or not. And I will work, work, work. But then at least I have a little burst of Harry Potter and magic coming in, which is awesome. Mm. I wish we had a wand that we can make everybody go vegan. Oh, I would love that wand. And to make them go, how about get them to go vegan by letting them taste all the delicious food. That would be the spell I would want. Because I don't want to make anybody do anything, but I will give you vegan food and you will like it. <laughs> you know <laughs> so I do enjoy that a lot so because it's Halloween I asked Chef AJ if I could show a really easy recipe well I mean not today is Halloween October is Halloween for me so every day new how ha new Halloween t-shirt new Halloween dish um but a lot of times what will happen is some people will be like eh, I don't want to do anything and then the big day arrives and you decide you wanna do something. And this is a quick, easy black bean soup that's made with some really yummy chili peppers and a little bit of vegetables. It's really easy. And then we'll decorate it a little bit to make it fun. I'm so excited because yesterday, Heather Goodwin made a pizza and really most of the episode was about the decoration and people just loved it. Oh, good. Yeah. And it's more fun. This one's gonna be a little more simple um, one of the things that I'm just heating up a little bit of water in a pan right now. So to saute my onions and I would like to point out and Chef AJ, I don't know if you do this or not, but if you notice, I don't know if you can see from there, but you might be able to see from above. See, they have their little frost coatings on. Um, one of the things I do to make life easier is I cut up all my onions and I cut up all my bell peppers. I just wash them, cut them, and put them in the freezer. And then I just pull them out whenever I want over the mop. So it makes things super easy. So do you do that as well? You know, it's a great idea. I don't always do it, but I, I definitely, you know, I do it with ginger. I always do it with ginger. Yeah, it works great with ginger and mushrooms. Mushrooms are great because unfortunately, it seems like it, if I don't use mushrooms within two days of buying them, that, then they're not so good. <laughs> it makes me very sad to lose a lot of mushrooms. Um, but if you just slice them it can, or dice them or mince them like portobellos, um, oyster mushrooms, I slice thinly and um, regular, just um, 
regular mushrooms. I slice those or mince those and I can throw them into a soup or stew um, and it works really well. You so, know, your pepperoni spice is, is, is particularly good on mushrooms. Ooh. I, you know, I really like, I love the pepperoni flavors and so many things that people are worried that they're going to miss, right? When they stop eating meat or they decide to eat healthier or more ethically or whatever they decide. But the thing is, is those spice flavors, nobody got harmed in those, right? And it's so easy to make it where you, you can make it SOS or soap is free too. So you can add salt in your blends or not. Even though I eat some salt, I don't put salt in any of my blends because I'd rather add it at the end. Because what if you want a little more punch, right? So if I want to get more of that kind of um, thinly sausagey flavor, if it had salt in it, I wouldn't be able to get that full oomph out of it. So that's one of the reasons why I like to do seasoning blends that way. And those of you who may be watching who know me, the, the induction burner is not my best friend. I only use it on demo, so I'm always having to look at the numbers. Like, who knows what the difference between 500 and 1300 is? I don't know, but <laughs> you know, so I'm just kind of heating some of this up. And when you freeze things like onions, bell peppers, I get, and mushrooms, people always ask me, do I need to thaw them first? And you don't, I just throw them in here. And usually the longest thing for me is sauteing the onions in water. And I'm using a little more water than I normally would because this induction burner is a little more unpredictable for me. But I'm also gonna use some minced garlic and I wanted to talk a little bit about a shortcut for it as well, because some of these that are in the jars are not whole food plant-based. They might have oil in them, they might have salt in them or some things that I don't even know how to pronounce. And I found this at Wegmans. Do you guys have Wegman, Chef AJ? We don't, but I've heard of it. Oh, I've never been before. It was like, it, it was, we were there for three hours because that's how excited I got. <laughs> so, um, and whenever I finally get to come see you, we'll have to, hopefully by then it'll be time that we can like do tours of all the grocery stores and farmer's markets. Like that's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. Yeah. Um, you but, know, do you have any like ethnic markets in oh, North Carolina? Yes, we do. So I go, there's a Hispanic market near me that I go to a lot. I, aren't they the best? They oh. are. I'm going to flip over here and turn on my fan because the overhead camera is getting a little fogged up. Cheryl rigged this great fan because I keep doing these unveiling of the Instant Pot and things like that. And totally fogging up the lens of my camera. But yeah, we have, and I have um, an Asian market and tons and tons of Indian markets. And so those are super awesome as well. And speaking of mushrooms, if you have an Asian market, you're gonna get the cheapest, freshest mushrooms you've ever seen in your life. And so I can go there and get like a pound, two pounds of mushrooms, very inexpensively. And that's why I will also just come and um, chop them up and get them ready to go. But this, um, the one at Trader Joe's and this one at Wegmans just has garlic water and citric acid. After you open it, you have to um, store it in the fridge. But other than that, it's really nice and it's convenient. You could, go ahead and chop up a bunch of garlic and freeze it in little ice cube trays, like, or just put just a little teeny bit, or like I did with the onion, I put them in little Ziploc bags. And see, then all you have to do if it's frozen solid is just hit it against the counter and it all comes apart. And there, do you have this tool? I call it my garlic smisher. It's my new thing. And I got this at the thrift store of all places. And you just put it on the clove of garlic and go like this and it's done. And it cleans up really easy. So I've been less lazy since I've gotten that. But um, one of the things we're gonna use in the soup too, 
is we're gonna use some ancho chili powder and guajillo chili powder. And what I do, and I know a lot of your fans are gonna have an air fryer or a, a Breville oven air, is you can go to the Hispanic market, get those dried chilies. They're very inexpensive there, but you can also get them at Walmart. So if you're living in the middle of nowhere and don't have like a really nice Hispanic store, you can get it there. And I know there's a few different supermarkets that carry them near me. So you just take the stems and the seeds out, toast them, and you can do this in the oven too. The, I, I usually use a dehydrator setting so I don't burn them because if you burn them, then that's not so good because you want them crisp enough that you can put them in a spice grinder. And that's what I've done for these powders. And when we get here, I'll let you look at them. We're not quite ready for them yet, but they're so pretty. And if you go to a spice shop, you can get things like this. But see, look how beautiful those colors are. And probably, I don't know, maybe it cost me less than a dollar to do this. And then if you don't have a spice grinder, because obviously I do, because I'm all about the spices. Um, you, if you have a coffee grinder, and maybe a coffee grinder you're not using anymore, or you are, your spouse is using, take some white rice, put it through the coffee grinder and grind it. That'll take some of that coffee flavor away. Not all, but pretty close. Then you can grind your really crispy chilies from the dehydrator or the oven. And then again, repeat with that white rice. So then you won't have chili flavored coffee, but that wouldn't be the worst thing. At least that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne says the garlic masher is great. And Anita says that Wegmans is her favorite store. Like it was like magic to me. I'm gonna put probably about two teaspoons of this minced garlic in here. We're gonna puree the soup in the end. And I'll let you kind of just, you're not really missing much by not seeing this, but I want you to just kind of see what's going on. Kathy Sebastian says, what is the top things to buy at the Mex Mexican grocery store? Spices. I know for me, it's purslane because that's the only place I can find it. And so many things are so much cheaper there, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, Mayacoba beans. So sometimes they're called canary beans. And if you get them at the fancy bean store, they're very expensive. But they're not expensive there. And they make the creamiest refried beans. And they're different. And you guys... um. For that recipe, my Mayakoba refried, uh, uh, sorry, that's, that's my dog being someplace it's not supposed to be. We <laughs> love seeing family members. It's <laughs> not Kate, it's Come on. Come on. Come here. Come on. It's okay. <laughs> okay, now go on here. <laughs> I have one treat left, one bribing treat left. So I'll get it over here. I think he thought he heard someone in the driveway. No one should give a delivery, right? Hey, so, Kathy, oh, sorry, <laughs> Kathy. Stephanie says, do you find the premium garlic in a jar less pungent? So therefore you need to use more of it than fresh. I think it can vary by brand to brand and how long I left it in the fridge, quite honestly. I feel like when I first open it up, it is really pretty close, but it probably is slightly dull from just doing regular. And and I'm not, with some of these tips, it's not so much that I want you to do them. I want you to know you have options available. That's all. Because, you know, everybody's cooking more than they've ever cooked before. So we may need a few little extra helpers. And these are some just diced bell peppers from the same thing. I've gotten them in my, I've been getting Misfit Market deliveries. And I have really enjoyed that the past six months. Um, but because I don't always use the peppers up quick enough, again, I just chop them up and put them in the freezer. And back to um, what to get in the Mexican market. So Mayacoba beans is a great thing to do. Um, and you can get the recipe for doing um, a not fried Mayacoba bean on plantbaseinstantpot.com. Just look up refried beans. 
I would get dried chilies are my favorite thing to get. Also cinnamon sticks. It's a crumbly kind of cinnamon stick that makes a really nice chai tea. And um, if you don't do black tea, you can still make chai. So I, again, on plantbasedinstantpot.com, I have a chai recipe and you don't have to put black tea in it. You could put decaffeinated green tea. You could put rooibos in there, which has zero caffeine. It's an herbal base. And um, you can also use a date paste or really anything you typically use to sweeten. So I know sweeteners are a hot topic with people. <laughs> so that's why a lot of my things say, Sweetener of choice to taste. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the vegan world, everything's a hot topic. Emily, Emily Nicole says, I just bought the ultimate vegan cookbook for your Instant Pot yesterday. That's a great book. And, and I have actually seen that one in Costco. I, I was so excited that that was in Costco. And you know what's in there? And I just taught it in my class yesterday. There is a Halloween layered dinner. So you cook it all at the same time. Um, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. And so what is on the bottom is black forbidden rice, which is actually a whole grain rice. It's really good and it keeps its shape. So you can't make sticky rice with it, but it makes kind of a nice pilaf the kind of rice. And then I made, it has cauliflower that you cook on the very top and then you make it into a sauce. And you also make kind of a black beluga lentil which are just the teeny black lentils. You could use French lentils, the little teeny tiny green ones too. And it cooks with um, butternut squash. And that is something else fun to make for Halloween. Where will people find this particular recipe? The one I'm making right now, you can find it in the Ghoulish Gourmet, a vegan Halloween e-cookbook. And I think Chef AJ, you're putting that link out there somewhere. And it may show up on my blog after this. I have a feeling I'm going to be like, woohoo, because I took a nap this afternoon and I'm going to be up and ready to do stuff. So I should make a blog post. I'm also making this one a little bit different. And I don't know about you, Chef AJ, but I find myself as a recipe developer often never making things the same way twice. Does that happen to you too? Only every time I go in the kitchen. That's why I get so frustrated writing books because I just, I, I, it go, depends what I have in the house and what I feel like. Right. And it, it's kind of cool that you can recreate the same thing, but it's also nice to know that you can change it a little bit. Because I was like, because this is going to be my dinner. And I'm like, I really would like a little onion and pepper in there today. And I'm going to put some cumin. And so when I'm using some like chilies and more, ice kinds of things, I often will put those in with the last part of the saute. I'm going to put in some paprika. I'm just going to put in about a half teaspoon of that. And then I'm going to put in, one thing you should know too about these ancho and guajillo chilies is they are not spicy. Sometimes an ancho will be a little bit spicy, so we're going to put a teaspoon of each end. And this is one I really wish you could be here smelling things. Because what happens when you're sauteing like cumin and chili is it blossoms. And it's really nice. It just gives that really yummy depth of flavor and umami that sometimes people think is missing mistakenly missing from vegan cooking. And I'm also in a minute, I found a new liquid smoke that is, has no additives or preservatives. It's just natural liquid smoke. And I'll show that again. So I've been very excited about this. I did not realize that the liquid smoke I was using had a caramel color in it. So I was kind of shocked by that because liquid smoke isn't like um, isn't like truffle oil or something like that, where they kind of artificially make some of the flavors. They actually burn wood and catch the condensation. And this is it in its purest form. You could use smoked paprika if you prefer to not use something like this. I am 
horribly shocked that I'm out of liquid smoke. I'm not liquid smoke, smoked paprika. So I like things smoking. So I'm probably gonna put about a quarter teaspoon in there. You, if you're not used to doing this, you could just put a drop or two and that would be fine too. Okay, let me let you see how yummy this is looking. And see how it looks darker and richer from the chili? Chili powder and chilies are just such a magical ingredient that we don't use enough of. So I'm gonna put some water in here. And then I often don't use um, broth. I make these little bouillon cubes. And you can get that recipe on either plant-based instant pot or healthy slow cooking. And I'm gonna tell you what they are too. We'll, we'll let this heat up a little bit to melt this down and then we'll get our beans in there. And I'm just using two cans of beans, black beans that are drained in a nice little cauldron. Thank you very much. <laughs> we have, usually we do a big giant Halloween party every year. So we have sets of Halloween dishes special for Halloween. Like I have those bowls and the little bowls and appetizer plate. You gotta do what makes you happy. But don't, I, one of the things this year in particular that I've been using more of as an ingredient is chili powder. And I sometimes say chili for the stew powder because if you get general chili powder. It has some chili powder like this, like single ingredient chili powder, but then it also has things like cumin and oregano and some other, others like that. And that's fine. Just know that if I'm telling you to put two teaspoons of this, you may not want to put two whole teaspoons of chili for the stew powder in there. But this is, and what's in the bouillon is so easy. You don't even really need to go get the recipe. And I started doing this in the slow cooker book, my very first book, because I realized buying better than bullion was gonna bankrupt me. It was gonna be more than my advance, the amount of bullion I would use. So I took it, take an onion, cut it in quarters. I take the skins off because we're gonna use, we're making a concentrate, not like a broth where you would maybe use the tops and the skins of onions and things like that. Um, and then some carrots, some celery, and some thyme. And in either, you can do this in the oven, like in a Dutch oven. You can do it in a slow cooker. You can do it in your Instant Pot. With your Instant Pot, you need a little water to get it to come up to pressure. You cook that, then puree it with a little bit of nutritional yeast. And then I freeze it in ice cube trays. So I make a big bunch of it. And then I just have it there to throw in whatever I want. And it's none of the weird ingredients, like better than bullion has a lot of kind of interesting things in there. But it makes everything taste that much better. Hey, Kathy, do you want to talk about the awesome classes that you're doing this month? I would love to. And even the class I taught yesterday, you guys can still get involved with. So I'm doing fall classes and instant pot classes for Kathy's cooking club. And so with that, yesterday I did, it's fall y'all, Instant Pot, because <laughs> I'm feeling my fall. And we did mushroom stroganoff, and we did that with a cauliflower base, which I think you would like a lot, Chef AJ. I love cauliflower, it's so neutral. You can sneak it into just about everything, even desserts. I know, it's, it's an amazing, amazing food. And so, we did that. We made the um, Halloween layer dinner. We made corn chowder and everything was with uh, whole food plant-based options, salt, op salt optional, no oil, just like this is no oil. Um, and we did something else and I'm trying to remember what it was, but so I'm also doing a class, not this coming Saturday, but the Saturday after, I believe that's the 24th. And we're going to do all autumn soups and it's going to be so good. And so basically it's a lot like this. You hang out with me for about two, two, two and a half hours. We make four different dishes and 
you can rewatch it as many times as you want. So Chef AJ is putting up the code for that. And this month I'm trying something a little different in addition to those. So what I'm doing is there's a new platform called Chibo and it's through GE, General Electric. And some of you guys may even know because the Esselstein ladies have been teaching over there for a while. So they usually I run my whole setup, so they run the setup, but I'm doing two Halloween classes and I'm so excited I could pass out. So, so Friday the 24th, 23rd, I think it's the 23rd, at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to do a plant-based Halloween dinner party. And what we're going to do is we're going to make my Swamp Monster gumbo. And um, that is so good. So it's like full of okra and jackfruit and vegetables. And it's cooked um, with an oat roux and no oil. So it's a no oil roux. And then you, um, you, instead of using regular brown rice to put on top, you put the forbidden rice on. And then the secret trick, and you can use this for other things too, is um, we puree a little bit of spinach or kale with some water. And you know how it gets bubbly when it's in the blender? What, right before you serve, you pour that on the top and it looks like a swamp. Cool. And we're gonna make um, a pecan shake and there's gonna be a nut-free option. It does have the option to use nuts and you can use the sweetener of your choice. We can use date. So, and it's like a really nice yummy treat because for Halloween you want something, but it doesn't have to be a piece of candy, right? To make it really good. And so that's what that one's going to be. And I'm going to dress up and the kitchen is going to dress up. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to cook stuff together. And on the Chibo platform, you can actually, instead of typing your questions, you get to say your questions and still be off camera. So that's kind of awesome. And then on Halloween, the day itself, at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to have a Harry Potter Halloween party. And Chef AJ, I wish you could be here because you would love it. Um, I'm going to make pumpkin juice, which is more than just juicing a pumpkin. But it has no added sugar. It is, again, for a whole food plant-based, it is a little extra treaty. And then I'm going to do a regular version of butter beer which is not whole food plant-based because we're going to use some coconut um, milk and some sugar to make it one way. But I have a whole food plant-based option and I'll tell you about that in a minute so you can kind of have that in your brain. And then we're going to make cockroach clusters. Ooh, that doesn't sound so good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's my favorite part to actually make them and eat them or to say that I'm making cockroach clusters. But it's actually just stuffed dates. So you can stuff it with anything crunchy. You could use a pumpkin seed or a peanut or just, you know, some um, air fried sweet potato chips we could put in there. Something just gives it a crunch. And you can either dip it into some melted chocolate chips or you can roll it in cocoa. And what it ends up tasting like if you use um, peanuts is it tastes like a Snickers bar. Oh my gosh. And that's all that's in it. So. The Harry Potter party is a little more um, geared towards kids, but I would be there even if I wasn't teaching it. So I hope you guys will be too. Do you, are any Harry Potter fans watching now or Halloween fans? Yeah, guys, if you like Harry Potter, let's hear from you. So Kathy, TS and Jane wanted to know what is the name of the burner that you're using? Um, it is an induction burner. And so it only works with certain kinds of pans. It has to have enough metal in it. So like um, a teflon -y kind of pan, it's not going to work with. And this one was just really from JCPenney. And Chef AJ, I changed this recipe enough. It may not be um, exactly the same. I think it may not be quite as black beanie. It may be more boiling flame. And you could serve it just like this too. We're gonna puree it in a minute, but I mean, just look at look at how pretty that broth is just from the peppers, the chilies, right? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Got a lot of Harry Potter fans here. Oh, do we? Oh, excellent. How do you know which uh, which tribe or school you're in? Uh, you take a test, but sometimes you kind of know anyhow. So like I test Ravenclaw, which is kind of like, um, 
book learning, studious, um, value knowledge. But I also, I feel like I'm a raven puff because there's Hufflepuff and they're all nature and herbs and stuff like that. So I feel like I'm a little bit of both. And I think you remember the time I went to a Harry Potter convention. I decided I was gonna have a vacation that didn't have to do with me going to something vegan or blogger or something like that. <laughs> and they had shirts that said like Raven Puff or Huffleclaw. And so I was like, oh, other people feel this way too. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm not that crazy. Do you, do anybody who's watching now, do you guys know what your houses are? Do we have any people who feel a little raven puff like me? Cheryl is a Hufflepuff through and through. They are very loyal and hardworking and sometimes just a wee bit on the non-motivated side. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's the spouse house. You know what I mean? You don't get in the dog house. You're you're being a Hufflepuff today, dear. But yeah, and on the blog too, um, on healthyslowcooking.com, I have some Harry Potter pumpkin burgers, which are like pumpkin and oats. There's um, a thing in the book where he eats a hamburger. And I like to think that that's the burger he would eat if he, if he was eating it now. Of course, he'd be. I'm going to go ahead and start curing some of this while we're talking. And you could have this be as thin and brothy or thick as you want to. guys will come and join me in the Halloween classes because I think I don't know about you guys but I'm feeling like this month is being a little stressful for me <laughs> anybody else feel a little stressed coming into fall <laughs> for whatever reason oh you guys should see this it's just starting to get more puree but do you see how beautiful that chili powder is making everything and so you could stop here and have it be a little chunky or keep going. I'm going to sit this off to the side for a second. Let's see if I can sit it up here. Okay. So when you decorate, there's a bunch of different things you can do. So I want to also finish tasting this. So I've been doing a series of lives on, um, my Facebook page is Healthy Slow Cooking or Plant-Based Instant Pot. This past week, it's been on kind of doing slow cooker meals. But the most important thing is after, like right now, let's taste this. What if, I, what if it's not quite where I want it to be? It's spot on with the chilies. And since I wanted to go ahead and make this without salt, you could do it salt to taste. When I'm not have a, a non-salt blend or a no-salt blend that I like or a salt substitute, I use a combination of garlic powder and onion powder. So I'm going to put in about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I like to do this at the end because I want that bite there. Because I think when we stop eating salt, what we really miss is that bite on the tongue. And I'm going to put about a fourth of a teaspoon of onion powder. And this is how I did the ranch dressing that Chef AJ was talking about earlier too. And I'm just gonna dissolve that in there. And I think I want to go ahead and put maybe a tablespoon or two 
of nutritional yeast extra in here just to add in a little bit of extra flavor. Another cool thing you can add into soups is mushroom powder. Chef AJ, do you use mushroom powder much at all? I love it. And, you know, sometimes I even make it myself just by getting those big ones at Costco and just grinding it. See, that's awesome. And, yeah, I haven't seen the big ones that have been dried yet um, in a while. But you can, again, and when I'm talking about a dehydrator, you guys, even like with the chilies, you don't need a $400 Breville oven to do it. I... I do it a lot in a hand-me-down plastic round layered <laughs> dehydrator and you can get them at thrift stores sometimes for like $10 or less. So all the things, I wanted to make sure you had some super thrifty things. Now I'm gonna taste it again and see if that was right. It's always better to put a little too little and add in some more later. Yep, okay. And I'm telling you this because I eat salt. And I can eat that without salt. That's how I can tell you it's good enough to, you know, for everybody. And another thing is, even though I eat some salt almost always, I would rather put it on at the end or let people put it in their own servings. So if you do that or not, it's still a very kind thing to do. Now I should have brought up my little soup bowl. We'll just put it in here for now, I think. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at this giant cauldron next to the soup and I'm like, perhaps that is not the serving size we are looking for. <laughs> so let's get some of this in here. We'll just use this little bowl. And like I said, you can make this thinner or thicker. You could puree it a little bit extra. If I, I kind of like these little black spots in here. Okay. And then I'll swap out this because I can get some of the mess that you're seeing away. So Kathy, people are asking me to link to your channel. Does that mean like to your Facebook page? Oh, it could be the YouTube channel. And I do have a YouTube channel. And but, you, but the lives you do on your Facebook page, right? Yeah, I do. But then I also put them up on my YouTube channel. And Wait, I'll look for that then and I'll post the link. I do have it where it's a name, but I'm not sure off the top of my head what it is. But like, so these are some, I did these two ways. I actually accidentally made these thinner, but they look like little flames. So you can have it look a little bit like this, like there's flames coming out of it. And you'll see that better from the front, I think. So let's, let's switch over. You see how that looks kind of cool? And you don't have to burn them. But I just thought that was a bonus, right? Look at what we've got and be happy. <laughs> but we can also do things like we can make eyes in the soup. And so eyes are a really big thing for Halloween. And so these are just some sliced olives. And you literally can just put a sliced olive in and make magic. And sometimes I will also then, I have some black sesame seeds. And you can just take one of these little, you have to be a little careful. So let's see if I can get it right the first time. Yeah. Can you guys see that a little bit? That's cute. That looks like a lizard eye. And we could even do something else with these. You know, we could have some little chips around to show, showcase the eye a little bit more. You could put a little mouth maybe in like cauliflower cream, but it's just really what I want you to get out of this demo is that I want you to really enjoy the, really have joy this month in Halloween, even if it's in something that you think can't possibly be made fun. Like black bean soup, we eat that all the time but you don't have a little eye in it or you don't have flame potato chips, right? So just take these little things. Like um, I do it all the time too. If you're, if you're making oatmeal, you can put, you know, little fruits or nuts or seeds and make little faces. Just go ahead and let yourself enjoy yourself and be a kid 
I'm 55 years old. So I'm not a tiny person, tiny young person who's, you know, getting joy every time I wake up in the morning. Sometimes it's like, uh, right. You know, when you're, when you're eight, you're like, it's another day. Yay. And you know, you get in your fifties, you're like, nah, is this a good day or is this a bad day? Maxie. <laughs> Maxie, Maxie doesn't like to talk about the bad days. <laughs> But that's why I want you to just kind of calm your baby. You want to sit, come show yourself to them. Come here. Come on. Come on. <gasps> show the maxi face. Come on. Let's show the maxi face. <gasps> Look. Yes. And Maxie has a pumpkin costume for Halloween. Don't you, buddy? Yeah. Oh, yes. That was very hard. He's... So what is, what is a hamsa vase? Lauren says she loves the white hamsa vase on the counter by the window. Oh. This, right? Oh, maybe it looks like a pumpkin. It's a pumpkin, but I think she's talking about, I don't know the name of this, but it's like a palm reading something or other. So I bet that's it. Cool. I think what else I have. I also have... And now I feel like I'm eight because I'm showing you all my new toys. Look, aren't these fun? I feel like where'd, you get, where'd you get everything? I got some of this stuff actually at Target. Um, the pumpkin. It's it's like every year Halloween has a new season. That's where I got these guys. Ooh. So they're doing it every year. There's like a thing. It's like vampires or mummies or funny monsters and so this year seems to be like man eating plants and so I think it's kind of cool because a I'm a little Hufflepuff which has the whole herbology and the mandrake roots you guys may remember from the movies and so I'm like having little palpitations and I may have overspent in Target yeah I'm doing two Halloween classes, so it all works out, right? So it's work supplies. So, so there's a question about your classes. Do, do people have to attend live? Can are there replays? Can they get access to past classes? Can they do one? How does it work? Absolutely. So with Kathy's Cooking Club, so those are the ones that are not through Chibo. Um, you can watch them live or watch them later on, and you can buy past classes. I'm getting ready to put. You have all the classes from this year on. KathyHester.Podia.com. Um, Chef AJ is going to put up those links for you, and I want you to get them through Chef AJ's links because it makes me happy, and it makes her happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd rather you go through there. But once you go through and you see one of those class links, you can go to the front and you can go and get as many as you want. You can get all the classes from this past year. Uh, classes are thirty-five dollars each. If you join Kathy's Cooking Club then that's $50 a month, but you get two cooking classes every single month. You can rewatch them as much as you want, as long as you're a member. Um, if you buy single class, you do get that for as long as I have classes up. So, which I expect to be a very, very, very long time. Um, so people who bought classes three years ago still have access to those classes. And your classes are long, so be prepared. I took one. It was great. And people kept saying, Kathy, make this. Kathy, make Green Goddess. And she would just pull out things, and she would just make stuff up on the fly. It was really great, the improvisational part. It is. You, got, you saw one of the oil-free sauce classes. So sometimes, I like this time and coming up, I actually have – I've been a grown-up. I've written down the recipes already. But then every once in a while, I'll be like, you know, this is all about learning how to make a sauce and learning how flavors go together. So if I do something like that, I'll give you a list of recipes in case something went wrong, which so far it hasn't. Um, but we may, I think I gave people seven recipes. Usually we make four to five recipes and I gave them seven recipes ahead of time. We made nine recipes, nine sauce recipes on the fly. And that way everyone can, you can learn how to do them yourself. You can learn how to make your own spice blends because you have the capability. It's just a matter of practicing and I can show you what I do. Cause sometimes as a recipe developer, I'm, it's weird for me to like give you a spice recipe and tell you to grind this now smell it. 
you know, does, do you smell at the tip of your nose or back of your sinuses, right? I love that you smell though, because people think I'm crazy. I smell everything before. I mean, because it, 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 if it doesn't smell good, it ain't going to taste good for the most part. And, and that is, that is really, really true. Yeah. And it, they're like, Hing is an exception. Hing is a delicious spice, Indian spice that I like have in four different Ziploc bags inside of something else hidden away from all the other food because everything will, it, it, it's not a pleasant smell, but it's a pleasant taste. But like with, if I'm making a coffee and I'm using a little bit of coffee syrup or something like that, I can smell when the amount is right. And I'm te trying to teach Cheryl how to do that. So I think it's a matter of being aware of it. Um, but with the Chibo classes, going back to those, um, it Those sounds are, like you're saying cheapo classes. Oh, it doesn't. Um, cheapo, <laughs> C-H-I-B-O dot I-O, not dot com, C-H-I-B-O dot I-O. Um, those are new to me. So the days I gave you, they're live. I believe, I think, and I just talked to someone else who just did one of the cheapo classes and he's getting the recording back. So as long as I get the recording back, I, you will have access to it afterwards. I just got to figure that out because I don't get all the emails and things from them the same way, but I'm going to, we'll figure it out. I'll have you guys email me. And if you have questions before then, questions about the classes, um, just email me at kathyhester at gmail.com and just put that you, you know, you saw me on Chef AJ and you have a question for me. Another place you can ask questions that's really great is my free private Facebook group, and that's Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester. And the people there are so nice. They're, you know, they answer questions if I'm not there. Everyone's very helpful. A lot of those people have attended the classes. So the most vocal people actually probably have attended most of the classes. So you could ask them about them as well if you want. But they are usually no shorter than two hours and sometimes as long as three hours. I'm trying to do four things now instead of five to keep everybody fresh. But remember, even if you attend it live, you can go back and watch it whenever you want. So you don't have to take everything in. Mm. So here, Lauren says that Hamsa is a protective sign, brings luck, health, and good fortune, hand of God in all faiths. Thank you. Yay, thank you for telling me about that. Cheryl was just like, I need that pumpkin. And I'm like, okay, we will have that pumpkin. So maybe that's why, maybe she was feeling a little for good fortune to bring into the house. I like that. That's neat. Well, this has been a lot of fun, a fun way to spend a Saturday, a Saturday, a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> I, oh, you know, that's the one thing since COVID, every day is Monday to me. <laughs> every day. It does feel like that, doesn't it? Every day is the same. Well, I live in a, yeah. I live in a, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm, I was just saying, you go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I live in an active senior community where like the signs when you come in every day is Saturday, but it's more like every day is Monday. So. <laughs> and I was going to say, I just wish you would live closer so I could bring you some of this yummy soup and I oh, can have it for you. It, we, would have, we would have so much fun cooking together. I wish there was like, you know, they have all these retreats. Well, not, not right now, but what, before COVID, they, 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 they should get every single vegan chef together. And we, that would be like the coolest thing, you know, like a little camp for us, you know? That would be really fun. I, you know, I'm in. I love teaching people how to cook anytime. And it would be, we talked about me coming and hanging out with you when you first moved there and it didn't work out. But when, when things are the new, new, new normal, <laughs> I'm going to have to come there and cook for you for like a few days. So you get to just chill out and relax. That would be so great. But what about the puppy? You can't leave the puppy. Sure. Well, we, he gets very well taken care of. He goes to top dog and he goes to doggy daycare and because he's a special boy, he does, he's dog reactive and has some issues, but they're so good with him. So he's with people more than 50% of the time. So they just take him on walks. They do all, he's like on a peanut. He goes on these like balance, crazy courses and like sniffs out treats. And so I think he, and he, the thing that lets me know it's good for him is when we say the word and we start packing his food up for him he gets super excited. Oh, that's and, neat. That sounds yeah. like a place I might like that as a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, I'm like, you get treats, you get naps, you get walked. I'm in. Yeah. 
Any new books on the horizon? I am still working on the ebook, which may be a paper book. I've got to talk to you personally about that a little bit more, but I am working on an oil-free sauce and spice cookbook. So all the things that people seem to love the most when they know how to make them. Because I think when a lot of people turn whole food plant-based, sometimes they're, and there's nothing wrong with doing this, but I think in the beginning, if you just eat plain rice and steamed vegetables with nothing on it, it's a little hard to transition. And some of these sauces are just like cauliflower pureed with lovely spices and things. So it's still super healthy and good. So I want to, I, one thing that my publishers have not let me do really is just to do an SOS cookbook. So I'm really passionate about doing this. And if you guys have something you miss as far as a spice blend or a, a flavor or a sauce, if you guys would email me that, I would love it because then I can add it in. Well, you know, like the number one thing we've been saying is soy sauce or tamari for people that are strictly no salt. And also the other thing is a lot of people seem to be developing an intolerance to nutritional yeast. So those two things, if you can figure it out, because really sauces are the key because the food is delicious. You don't need to change the food, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes. You just need to mix it up a little bit with the sauces. Exactly. And I mean, you can make a pot of lentils and put pepperoni spice in it, right? You know, in some of it, and you could put some sausage spice, you could put it on um, to a potato and make like a pizza potato with that and some cauliflower, you know, nacho cheese or leave out the, the chilies and make it just a cauliflower cheese. There's just so many wonderful ways to use vegetables and beans. And it's just, I think that people kind of look at the store and they're like, oh, well, this spice has this weird stuff in it. And maybe it has some oil and it has lots of sugar and salt. And it's just so easy to, to leave that stuff out and just leave the flavor in. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what you, you, you are great at flavor. Mary says saying do it SOS free, but don't advertise it. Just don't tell people. I know they'll in the very first book I did the vegan slow cooker. I had oil-free options in the book and they took all my oil-free options out. Oh. And, and the, the revised vegan slow cooker, they let me put them back in because by then I had a proven whole food plant-based audience, but it just kills me because, you know, there's so like your books, um, Engine 2 books, the McDougal book, there's, there's so much proof that it's a huge community. And the thing but, is, you can always add the salt, and the oil and the sugar, people, you just can't take it out once it's in there. Exactly. And that's why, you know, I just, I always appreciate you saying how inclusive I am, because I never want anyone to look and because I'll say one tablespoon oil or water saute to make oil free. I try to just get it right there in the ingredients because if it doesn't have oil and then some people go, oh, it's, it's that weird stuff, right? Like I've already went vegan. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, you've got that. You've got the oil free, you know, we can put salt in or we can do a salt substitute or we can, you know, one of the things I do a lot in the classes is I talk about how much garlic powder, onion powder, and sometimes ground celery seed I would use as like a plain salt substitute because even my salt substitute wouldn't go with every single cuisine, but those three items will go in just about anything. So it's easy. Don't let people tell you different. Well, I love what Joanne says. She says you can change your meal by changing your sauce. Truer words have never been spoken. Oh, I love that. And, and it's true. Like one of the classes I think I did earlier is I made like literally a big pot of quinoa and a pot of lentils. And then we made five dishes out of it. So you can cook and not have to slave over the stove and still make wonderful food. Yeah. Because well, I, you are one of the best, culin if not the best culinary teachers, guys, check out her classes. They're really, really good. They're just, they're such a great value. She is just such a giver. And it's just so fun to be with her live because really she, you just say one thing and she'll do it. Well, you know, I don't want, I don't want to make do everything they say, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if she has the ingredients and in, in the wherewithal, she's, you know, in the middle of the class, you know? Well, and I love making, I love tailoring things for people's special diets. So, so hit me up and yet yeah, I'm working on like kind of umami dust and I am working on kind of umami sauce, which would be 
but I hate to say it's going to be a soy sauce substitute because it's probably not going to taste the same because it's not going to be aged the same way, but hopefully it will bring the same amount of depth to the food. So fingers crossed, send me all good vibes about that. That'll be good. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. And anything you want in the show notes, just email them to me and I can always add them. And guys, please check out all of her wonderful books and her classes and make this recipe because it looks like it's a lot of fun and not too hard. Easy. Even your kids can make it for you. Yep. Oh, Mary Lou says, Kathy needs a Wonder Woman apron. Heather wore one yesterday. Maybe I can find out where, but you're not an apron person. I've never seen you wear an apron. I've only worn an, I've, I've been paid to wear an apron before. I'm more of like, it covers up my fun shirts. So I'm more of a shirt person actually. And I just got, found these other ones and I got six new Halloween t-shirts in the mail yesterday. And I'm so excited. Do your, do your fans send you a lot of shirts? I get a lot of shirts sent to me. Ooh, no, but maybe I should start asking them. <laughs> maybe it's a hint. Oh, <laughs> maybe yeah. it's a hint. They don't like what I'm wearing. Well, this was great. <laughs> Brenda says, thank you, ladies. You guys are so welcome. And thank you guys for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. I do hope you'll come back tomorrow. And we have two great shows for you again at 11 a.m. Another wonderful cooking demo with Elizabeth Alfano. She's going to be making mm-hmm. some kind of SOS-free muffin that sounded delicious. And oh. at 2 p.m., we have an actor and environmentalist named Ed Begley Jr., who you might have seen in in the movies or on television like Mm Saints Elsewhere and Kathy Kathy, thanks so much and uh, I hope people will really check out your classes so they'll see how wonderful they are oh well thank you so much for having me it's always so much fun to hang out with you you are always welcome all right take care everybody bye-bye